This is Brian Lealy with the TM Group, and today I wanted to go over some reporting uh, analysis reports for you, um, mainly focusing on inventory. There are some tools that a lot of our customers aren't currently taking advantage of, so I wanted to just kind of review the inventory analysis reports and show you the functionality there and how those reports work. So let's go ahead and jump in. First, I want to show you um, the makeup of those particular reports. So if we take a look at finance, under finance, you'll see that there's uh, three different sections actually that have analysis reports. We have inventory analysis, sales analysis, and purchase analysis reports. So like I mentioned, today we're gonna focus on the inventory analysis reports. So let's take a look. So once I select that, I've got a couple reports that I was just playing around with. I wanted to give you guys a good example of what uh, is power or what is available here. So think of these analysis reports as similar to the account schedules where you build a row and a column layout and kind of put them together. And then you can run the report uh, to show different uh, characteristics or different date ranges. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about the uh, uniqueness of the date range functionality in, the, in these analysis reports. So for example, I have this gross margin report. And what I've created here, if I go ahead and open this up, you'll notice, as I mentioned, uh, we've got our line template. So that's defining what the rows are going to display. And then we also have a column template. And again, that's going to be the, the things that are across the columns. What information do we want to show there? So let's take a look at the chairs uh, row template or line template a moment. And we'll go ahead and edit this so you can see the details that make up this particular information. So all I did here was, uh, again, keeping in mind this is based on inventory. So I've taken and loaded all of the inventory items that have the word chair in them. So I basically went up to my actions went to functions and said insert items. So I basically am looking at my entire inventory list. I just went up here and said chair, if I could type correctly. And I got that list and I just uh, clicked on the ellipsis there, went select more, populate or clicked on all of them. So it's only gonna bring in this set of data into there. And that's essentially what I did. I clicked okay and it populated those inventory items with the word chair in the description. So that's my list. That's the group of inventory that I really wanted to report on. So I brought those in and then you'll notice at the bottom here, I added a formula to sum up the total. So basically I have a total row in my, uh, in my report. So this last row is just totaling the amounts that are gonna be uh, appearing in the columns that I have in the report. And I did that simply by changing, and you can do this many different ways. I just simply said chair, 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 all the way down. And then all you have to do is put chair in here and it knows to sum that up. Now I could have left the inventory items in here and you'll see when we display the report, that might've been a better choice. Uh, but in order to add those all together, then you have to key in each in inventory, uh, individual inventory item with a pipe in between and you know make sure it summarizes all the way through because th there's really no way to sum words together so basically you identify each row uh, character and then put it in so anyway i did it the quick and easy way quick and dirty way so there it is so this is the rows that would appear in our report so let's go ahead and take a look now at the uh, column layout and i called that gross margin so we'll take a look at this real quick so here's my gross margin column layout and to see the details of that i just click on columns so when you're creating these new you first name it and then you go in and actually create the column layout. So here we are and this looks very familiar to your account schedules as you'll notice. So we give it a count name or a column name if you need. And then um, so my different columns, I've got current sales, quantity and cost. So I'm showing uh, the revenue and the cost. And then I've got my unit cost and my unit price. And then I calculate another formula to give me my gross margin on those sales. So then I come over here and uh, on this, now this is a little bit different. Um, so these analysis types, uh, basically what I did, so if I click this down arrow, if you don't already have this list populated, which I did not, um, so if nothing appears in here, you can just go select from full list. And all you have to do is click on setup and then you can say restore default 
analysis types, and it will populate this list for you. So that's all you need to do there. I think I did add a new one. I added, uh, I believe it was unit cost, if I'm not mistaken. So I just brought that value in here and added that as a row. And you'll notice this is the key that pulls those values. So when you're in the value type, there's a long list here. So unit cost was one of those items. So I just created that because it was not originally in that list. So again, you can just uh, say reset default and that will populate this list for you so you have it. And you'll notice that's what, uh, so for sales amount, that's how it knows what to pull for each particular uh, column as we're looking here. I'll cancel this a moment. So you'll see here, uh, we just pull items from each of those. So the, each column is pulling a different value from that list. So my sales quantity, my sales amount, and my cost of goods sold. And then I've got unit cost, unit price, and then my sales um, amount, uh, which is basically my gross formula. So anyway, did all that. So there's my column layout. So again, we built the two pieces. We built the column layout and the lines, um, and we put those together. So I'll go ahead and say cancel here. So we put those together in this analysis report and I just called it, uh, my report name is called gross, gross margin. It's using the chairs and the margin uh, uh, line template and column template. And then here we have this um, month date thing. So first of all, I'm gonna show this uh, report. I'll show it a couple different ways. We can run it in a matrix, which is cool. So this is this is the, the good stuff. So I click on show matrix and you'll see it lists out all my chairs. And like I mentioned earlier, probably should have kept the item number in here. It just would have been a little bit more intuitive than putting the word chair, but that was me being lazy to summarize this total field. So anyway, um, you'll, you'll see how that would work. That would look really nice if I did leave the item numbers in there. But I'm looking at current sales, my quantity that was sold, the cost value of that sale, and then I have my unit cost and my unit price. And then I'm showing gross margin, which is essentially the current sales minus the cost, giving me my gross margin number. So I can look at this in total. So for this period, um, 11,495 cost is 8958 and giving me a gross margin of 2536. So looking at this, a couple things I want to point out or at least one thing in particular is the date range. So if I look at this, I'm going to drill in here and I want to show you the filter that's being used. So the date cuz there's really no place to pick a date when you're running that matrix and I'll talk through that a little bit. And I'll also show you an alternative way to run these reports if you want if you want to run them out to more of a print job than a than a matrix view. So the posting date, notice it's 51 through 531. And that is because when I ran that report, I said print it for the month. Now this is relative to the date that I am logged in as. So I log in, so you'll see that my my work date is 5-1-2018. So it's using this date, my work date, as the basis for whatever I select here. So if I were to pick day, it would run this report for May 1st of 2018. If I pick week, whatever week that date falls in, that's the week I'm going to get. Same thing with month and quarter. So since May falls in the second quarter, it's gonna give me April 1st through 6.30. I believe that's right, April, May, June, yes. So that's the date range. And then for the year, whatever year I'm in, it's gonna give me from January 1st, 18 to 12.31, 2018. So these are set up that way to work as just that. So there's notice there's no date filters in here. I can't add and put in a specific date range. So that's something to get used to, but it may not be a factor on just, you know, running these and trying to play with them. So I thought, well, that's kind of odd that they don't give us that functionality. So you can do that. So um, you can run them that way or as an alternative way. Now this isn't as great because some things, and I'm still playing around with this a little bit, but I can go to navigate and then report. 
and I can say print. Now this brings up a menu for me. And notice what I have. I have a date filter. Cool. And it's already dropping in the month because that's what I had set up in here. But I can actually change this to say January 1, 18 through, whoops, January 1, 18 through uh, 8, 31, 18. Okay, so I'm actually building the date range. However, it's not as cool because when I preview this report, it doesn't give me the full thing. So, and I don't know why, maybe I just need to play with this a little bit more, but it's trunking off one of my columns. Um, so I'm not sure how, and it's not that I can scroll over and see that. And maybe it's because it's a function uh, column that I'm missing, because that's my calculation for my gross profit. Um, but I'm getting the data, so it's it's all, it's mainly here. <laughs> so I, I get that. Um, but anyway, it's giving me the current sales. So this is a way, and notice the date range. It's giving me January 1 through 831, just like I put in there. So it's actually giving me the data in that custom range. So you do have some options here to run it in a date range if you want to print it like this. Uh, we could also send this out to Excel, all those types of things, or you can go through and select this, uh, uh, I guess, date or um, time period, again, based on our settings for our work date, is that's what's going to calculate here. So just keep that in mind. That's one of those little gotchas that, quite honestly, it took me a little while to figure out how it was calculating the date when I drilled into these reports, and it just did not seem to be updating as I had hoped. So I was a little baffled with that. So when it saves, and I'm going to try this, um, and see, so it's quarter, and now if I run this, you'll notice the amounts. Let's confirm that it's actually hitting the right quarter. So notice that uh, posting date is actually doing that, April 1st through 630, 2018, because my work date falls in that quarter. Now, if I was running this as of uh, August, it would give me a third quarter uh, time frame and give me those results in that data set. So just uh, some tips there on that, but these reports are pretty darn cool. And just like any of the other um, reports, you can interchange you know, the analysis uh, column template and the line type and run these in several different fashions. Um, very cool report, but uh, something that our customers are just not really taking a lot of advantage of, but I think these can be pretty powerful. Uh, again, this was a very basic one that I, I'm showing you but uh, pretty cool stuff. So to be able to just analyze some of my inventory, different, you know, I could put in different groups in total and you can get real fancy with these things. You can bold and total stuff and, you know, do different things with them, put some calculations in here. Um, pretty helpful. So this gives you a real good view without having to run a bunch of different reports to get the same information. So again, I hope this was helpful. Uh, this is Brian Leali from the TM Group and Hope to, uh, if you have any questions about these or need anything, uh, please let us know. We're always here to help. Thanks.